So you want to make a UI for your game, and you spend like a day throwing something together in Unreal or Unity with like some boxes, and you end up with, well, just black boxes with white text on it, and you're like, oh, this doesn't look good, and I wasted a day on it. So I'm here at Rife, who does UI stuff. I'm here with the co-founder, and he, I'm going to talk a bit more about how do you do UI, how does the, the platform work, and how can you actually help with it, because it's really cool software for indie developers as well. So. Maybe can you give a very quick rundown of what is this, basically? Sure, yeah. So Rive is a new way to build UI for games. We have a full pipeline, which means that we have a new editor that's really designer friendly. It's something that you know designers don't need to know code to be able to build really animated, really interactive graphics. And then you can export them to our custom format, which runs on Unreal, Unity, your custom game engine. We, we have a really performant renderer, which means that you can fill the screen with vector graphics and uh, run it on any engine without any yeah, performance uh, hit, really. Yeah. Of course, making UI is very pretty. The software supports it. But of course, you as the designer or the developer, I guess, need to know how do I make pretty UI. Do you have some tips there? Does Rife help you with making things look better just by I mean, magic? I, or? I, I think a big part of it is just having a design tool that is made for designers. It's not a developer tool. It's it's If you're in design mode on Rive, it feels like Figma. If you're in animate mode, it feels like After Effects. You know, it's it's like the, all common like design and animation principles apply. So if you learn how to be a designer, how to be an animator, you know how to use Rive. We do have a community, which is a really cool way to learn how to use Rive. So if you go to our community on our site, uh, you can open up files that other people have built yeah. and you can just open them in the editor and check out how they're built so that's a really cool way to learn yeah. um, we have a lot of tutorials we have a YouTube channel mm -hmm. so yeah I think there's a lot of resources to, to learn how to use Rive and and then okay I'm, I'm learning it I'm making my first UI you've probably seen a lot of game UIs then since you you basically helped with making the entire software to begin with what are like some some top beginner indie failures where you know they mess up how their UI works or, or okay, something like okay. that yeah so I would say I'd say the number one mistake is probably not thinking about UI as a core part of your game really early on. I think oftentimes, I think we'd probably all would agree, and there's and there's data to back this up that UI can make or break a game. You know, yeah. you, you can have the most beautiful game on the planet, the most fun game, but if the UI sucks, it's going to be really painful to use yeah. to use it and, and and not enjoyable. And so. Despite that, despite us all agreeing on that, UI still tends to be like an afterthought, and, and trying to get like really cool animation and building something really custom yeah. takes a lot of effort. So you start thinking about UI early on as a part of your experience, and a tool like Rive really empowers you to do that because it's multi-platform, so you don't have to think about what engine you're going to ultimately be using. It, it's, it's supported on any engine. You know, you can really empower your designers to use their skills to build something that they have the confidence to know is actually going to work in an yeah. engine. It's not just a video or a mock-up that you then got to figure out, oh, how are we going to how are we going to rebuild this in code? Yeah. Um, you, you, you empower them to use their skills to big, build something that is actually functional and actually ships yeah. in the final product. I think one trap, though, maybe for, for developers, I want to know your thought on this as well, is where I'm starting my awesome game idea. The audience probably has done this as well. Leave a comment if you have. And it's like, OK, I work on it for a week, and I have my core mechanic, but I'm kind of sick of it already. I want to move to something else. And I'm like, OK, now I'm going to make the UI. Yeah. And because it's like it makes you feel like you're making a lot of progress again. Do you think there's a bit of a trap here as well with Rive for like, oh, I'm gonna spend a week on making my UI, but there's still no game? Like when is the point where you should real because you're like, hey, get started early. Yeah. But you probably want to make the game first before the, the UI. What is the point you should I, I think so my background is in design. So okay, from, yeah. from my perspective, it's it's all part of figuring out the look and feel and the style that you want to get to. I think the best games think about the experience from first principles for, for everything, not, not just in-game, but also the, the UI. It has to be cohesive and it has yeah. to feel like it's part of a, the same story. So I would say there's really, I don't think, a right way to do it, one yeah. before the other. It's but not like, oh, one month in you should start like working. It's like, yeah, it but depends on the game as well, I guess. And I think, I think it's just the important thing is to think of them as two things that need to work together, not against each other or, or you know, one, you know, do I give more time to one or less time to the other? I think they're both equally important and yeah. you just need to acknowledge that you're going to have to commit to both of them um, to, to, to really get the best possible experience. Yeah. And and I'm a pretty bad UI designer. Like where, because how is that something you learn as well? Like maybe design is something that often are like, oh, I don't have this inherent thing where 
I'm very creative. How did you get into this? Yeah. How did you, so, are you good at this? I, I would assume I, so. I have my background is in design. <laughs> and so I, I, how I started was just like looking at great design and trying yeah. to break it down by first principles. Like what's going on? Like why does this typography look so good and this other one doesn't look good? Yeah. And a lot of that comes from looking at a lot of stuff and just trying to understand, you know, what's going on with the grid? What's going on with the proximity of things? Yeah. And, and one of the things we do is that, that's actually one of the reasons why we give you a community in Rive where you can go and check out. What files. others are doing. Why yep. does this look so good? And you can. You can and, and the fact that you can just open it up and see how it was set up in the editor and understand yeah. like, oh, this thing aligns to that thing. And that creates kind of this visual relationship that makes it kind of feel like it's related. Like understanding all those principles is super yeah. important to understanding why good design works. I, I feel like maybe we should use Rive for our own games. They're very UI driven. So honestly, cool. maybe we should. How do I get started? And like, what are like some, some pitfalls? Because of course, not everything goes perfect probably yeah. with, with onboarding new users. Yep. What should people watch out for? First of all, to get started with, with Rive, if that's what you're asking. I think you maybe a first and important one is it's free, right, for indies? That's right. So so the, the entire pipeline is, is you can use it for free. So we have the editor has a really permissive free plan. Yeah. Um, it, for indies, you can you get unlimited files. You get access to pretty much everything for free. You, you really only need to pay on our editor if if you want access to team collaboration or enterprise security features like yeah. SSO and that type of stuff. But uh, but really, we, we mostly monetize businesses and enterprises. As an indie, you get access to the editor for free. And then the, the format that you export, the runtime and the render that, that ships in your game, yeah. that's all open source. It's MIT licensed, Even so better. you own all of it. So yeah, really easy to get started. You can go to the website and sign up. And there's a web editor, or you can download the desktop app. We have yeah. Mac and Windows. The desktop is really performant, so I suggest you check that out. So and, yeah. getting started, what was the biggest pitfall? I'm sorry, I distracted you. From oh, that no, from getting started with with building yeah, game UI like, or no, with, with Rive. So with I'm Rive. I'm, okay, I'm okay. installing it now because it's free for me. Yeah. I'm getting started. Are there some things that I should watch out for? Some mindset shifts I need to do. I, so I think if you're a designer, it's going to feel really familiar to you. Like the design mode is going to feel. Like, like like any other design tool. Animate mode is going to feel like any kind of animation tool. Yeah. Where you might want to watch out for is the state machine. So the state machine is this new node-based way to take your graphics and make them interactive yeah. and connect them visually in a way that doesn't need any code. So from a designer's perspective, it's a new way to think. Um, but the advantage is that it makes you think a lot more like a developer. So as you're yeah. building it, you're working within the constraints of what is actually going to work in your engine. Um, and, and then the advantage of that is that once you've built it out like that, your developer can connect to it in the game engine and manipulate all of the state machine with code. So I would say that's probably the most novel thing in Rive is learn how to use a state machine. Yeah, but I guess if you're a programmer, that's no worries, right? Because you're used to that most likely. Yeah, if you're working with, with an engineering team, they're probably, they're, they're gonna love this. They're gonna feel, they're gonna feel like you're taking off a lot of work off of their plate yeah. and, and you're empowering the designer to do the stuff that they should have always been doing. Like designers, instead of building videos and prototypes, they should be building the real graphics. That, yeah, that work. and not be like, hey, this is what I want, this mock-up now replicated, poor that, engineer. That's, I think, one of the one of the hardest parts about building graphics for software in general, not yeah. just games, is, is this, this hard coding problem where you take a graphic and you convert it to code. Yeah. And that is a really bad, bad process, process for, for iteration, for one. Also for, like, sometimes being able to build in code what the designer envisions, yeah. not only is it really hard, it might be impossible. Like the yeah, might be they, they have something. crazy ideas sometimes. Yeah. And so if you're instead helping your designers build a graphics format that is ready to run, you, you, you can work on it knowing that what the designer is building is actually gonna work, and you make the iterative process a lot faster because now the designer can keep working on the graphic, they can keep tweaking it, providing that those, you know, the state machine inputs and some of the events in the file are set up correctly, yeah you can still hand that off to an engineer and, and you don't need to involve them in the whole process. And like of updating your UI. And yeah, yeah that, sound, that sounds awesome. So yeah, I think guys, this is a great solution. I, I reach out to these people, not just for like out of interest, but because I think these are great technologies and I think there's a win-win to us. So go ahead, there's a link down below to go and check it out. Leave us your comments. Where can they like, if they have, have issues, do you have like we have a dis or, yeah, yeah, we have a Discord. Uh, you can find it on our website. If you go to rive.app, um, you can find that community I was talking about. There's community files where you can find the files that people work. There's like thousands of files that you can yeah. learn from other people. And then there's a Discord link in our in our nav bar. And uh, yeah, that's that's very active. There's there's people every day. There's live chats. There's video streams. It's it's a very active community, and I, I think I think you'll you'll get a lot of support there. All right. So I hope you enjoyed this DevCom coverage. We're doing a lot more this week, so stay tuned for that. Curious about your thoughts and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one.
thank you also so yeah. much for, no, for being here. Me. Yeah, so yeah, really see ya, bye.